makes us humans? Is it our ability to think, create, and reason? Many argue that language, art, and morality define us. But when and how did we first become human in this sense? Perhaps the answer lies in something even deeper, our family bonds. Before civilization, before culture, early humans depended on each other to survive. We cared for our young, protected the weak, and passed down knowledge. Maybe just maybe what truly makes us human isn't just intelligence. It's the strength of our relationships. If protecting and standing by our families is the essence of what makes us human, then the Neanderthals of Chagirskaya Cave were undeniably as human as any of us today. In a groundbreaking discovery that has sent ripples through the scientific community, researchers have unearthed what appears to be the first conclusively identified Neanderthal family group. Deep within the Chagirskaya Cave in southern Siberia's Altai Mountains, the remains of 13 Neanderthal individuals have revealed an intricate web of family relationships, including a father and his teenage daughter. This discovery, along with seven other individuals, including a possible pair of cousins from a different family group, and two additional Neanderthals from a nearby site, represents the most extensive collection of Neanderthal genomes identified to date. This rich genetic data sheds light on Neanderthal society, showing that their communities were small, tightly connected, and shaped by a striking pattern in which females often left their birth groups to join new ones. While previous studies have mainly explored broad patterns of population movement and evolution, this discovery shifts the focus to the personal lives of Neanderthals, shedding light on the complexities of their kinship and social structures. The ability to map Neanderthal family ties and social dynamics with such precision is an extraordinary achievement, marking a major breakthrough in our understanding of these ancient humans who once coexisted with Homo sapiens. Nestled along the tranquil banks of the Charish River, within the breathtaking foothills of the Altai Mountains, lies Chagirskaya Cave, positioned about 100 kilometers west of the famous Denisova Cave. Denisova Cave has been a treasure trove of archaeological discoveries, uncovering traces of Neanderthals, Denisovans, modern humans, and even a rare Neanderthal-Denisovan hybrid, painting a rich and complex history of habitation spanning an incredible 300,000 years. In contrast, excavations at Chagirskaya Cave have exclusively revealed Neanderthal remains, along with distinctive stone tools dating their presence to between 50,000 and 60,000 years ago. A groundbreaking genome sequencing analysis in 2020 revealed that a female Neanderthal from Chagirskaya Cave belonged to a population distinct from the earlier Neanderthals who once inhabited Denisova Cave. To gain deeper insights into the lives of these ancient individuals, a research team from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, meticulously extracted DNA from 17 Neanderthal remains found at Chagirskaya along with several more from the nearby Okladnikov cave. From the remains at Chagirskaya, mostly teeth and bone fragments, the team successfully sequenced full and partial genomes from 11 individuals. However, the samples from Okladnikov were less well-preserved, providing viable DNA from only two individuals. This rich genetic dataset allowed researchers to determine that the Neanderthals of Chagirskaya were more closely related to their counterparts in Europe than to the much earlier Neanderthal populations of Denisova cave, among the sequenced genomes, a striking genetic link was uncovered between two individuals, a male adult and a teenage female, who shared half of their DNA, indicating a direct parent-child relationship or siblinghood. To determine their exact connection, researchers examined mitochondrial DNA, which is passed exclusively from mother to offspring. Since their mitochondrial DNA did not match, it provided conclusive evidence of a father-daughter relationship. This revelation not only adds a deeply personal dimension to our understanding of Neanderthal lives, but also highlights the power of modern genetic analysis in unraveling intimate details from the distant past. Through these techniques, researchers have bridged tens of thousands of years, offering a rare glimpse into the familial bonds of those who once roamed the earth. As the team delved further into the genetic makeup of Chagirskaya Cave's inhabitants, they uncovered even more layers of familial connections. A particularly intriguing finding emerged when they discovered that the father, already identified through his teenage daughter, carried two types of mitochondrial DNA, a rare phenomenon known as heteroplasmy. This trait was also detected in two other adult males within the cave, suggesting they shared a maternal lineage. Heteroplasmy is a fleeting genetic condition, typically disappearing within a few generations. 
According to researchers, its presence in multiple individuals strongly suggests that these Neanderthals lived in the same community at the same time, further reinforcing the close-knit nature of their society. The genetic analysis did not stop there. The team also identified another pair of related individuals, a male and a female, who were second-degree relatives, likely cousins. Given their nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle, the discovery of both baby and adolescent teeth from the same individual suggests a deep connection to the site likely indicating either an extended period of residence or repeated visits over time. Chagarskaya Cave, beyond being a Neanderthal dwelling, seems to have served as a strategic hunting ground. The large quantities of bison and horse remains suggest that its location was ideal for intercepting seasonal migrations, functioning as a temporary hunting camp for its inhabitants. For over a century, Neanderthals were dismissed as primitive cavemen, slow, dim-witted, and doomed to extinction. This caricature, born from a mix of limited early evidence and perhaps our own prejudice, has proven to be one of archaeology's most persistent myths. Yet piece by piece, discovery by discovery, this oversimplified image is crumbling away, revealing a far more nuanced and compelling picture. These were family members who lived, worked and died together as a community. In Spain's El Cidron cave, researchers found evidence of Neanderthals using medicinal plants suggesting they had sophisticated knowledge of their environment and its resources. The revelation of Neanderthal artistic capabilities has perhaps been one of the most striking blows to their primitive image. The discovery of cave paintings in Spain that predated the arrival of modern humans forced a complete re-evaluation of Neanderthal cognitive abilities. These weren't simple doodles. They were abstract patterns and hand stencils that required planning, technical skill, and symbolic thinking. More recently, the finding of shell beads and eagle talons modified for use as jewellery has suggested that Neanderthals had a sense of aesthetics and personal adornment. Their technological capabilities have also proven far more advanced than previously thought. Recent analysis of Neanderthal tools has shown they were heating birch tar to create a powerful adhesive for their weapons, a complex multi-step process that required careful control of temperature and timing. This kind of technological innovation suggests not only intelligence, but the ability to pass knowledge down through generations. The picture emerging from the Siberian family group adds another crucial dimension to our understanding. These weren't isolated bands of hunters barely scraping by. They were organized communities with complex social bonds. The genetic evidence suggests they practiced sophisticated mate exchange between groups, a behavior that would have required planning, communication, and social protocols. Perhaps most touchingly, Evidence has emerged of Neanderthals caring for their sick and injured members. Skeletal remains show signs of serious injuries that had healed, indicating long-term care from other group members. This compassion extended to death practices as well, with growing evidence of intentional burial of their dead, sometimes with grave goods, a practice long thought to be unique to modern humans. The implications of these discoveries extend far beyond academic interest. They force us to confront our own biases about Neanderthals. The more we learn about them, the more we see reflections of ourselves. Through careful analysis of both mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosome sequences, researchers found a fascinating disparity that speaks volumes about Neanderthal social structures. The Y chromosome diversity among the group was notably lower than mitochondrial diversity, about an order of magnitude difference, suggesting a pattern where females typically moved between communities while males stayed in their birth groups. This migration pattern becomes even more interesting when we look at the specific numbers. The average coalescence time for Y chromosomes was just 446 years, while for mitochondrial DNA it stretched to 4,348 years. In more human terms, this means the male lineages were much more closely related than female lineages, indicating that women regularly joined the group from outside communities. This mirrors patterns seen in some modern human societies and suggests sophisticated social organization that allowed for genetic diversity while maintaining stable community structures. The preservation of such detailed genetic information across more than 50,000 years speaks to both the exceptional conditions in the Siberian cave. When examining the genetic material, researchers found something particularly intriguing about homozygosity patterns. Up to one third of these individuals' genomes contained long segments of homozygosity, suggesting they were part of a relatively small, isolated community. The technological capabilities of these Neanderthals were equally sophisticated. The Sibiriachica, Middle Paleolithic industry found at Chagurskaya cave, 
represents a distinct technological tradition, different from tools found at other nearby sites like Denisova Cave. This suggests that different Neanderthal groups develop their own technological traditions, much like different Homo sapiens cultures today have their own ways of making things. The cognitive abilities of Neanderthals have emerged as one of the most fascinating areas of recent research. Evidence from Chagurskaya Cave and other sites across Eurasia suggests they possessed remarkable memory and spatial awareness skills that might have even surpassed those of modern humans in some aspects. Their ability to navigate and hunt in diverse landscapes required mental mapping capabilities that would impress even today's wilderness experts. Recent studies of Neanderthal brain endocasts, molds of the interior of fossil skulls, have revealed that while their brains were shaped differently from modern humans, they were equally large, and in some regions more developed. The occipital lobe, responsible for visual processing, was notably larger in Neanderthals, suggesting enhanced visual acuity and spatial processing abilities that would have been crucial for hunting in varied terrains. Perhaps most remarkably, archaeological evidence has revealed sophisticated healthcare practices among Neanderthal communities. At multiple sites across Europe and Asia, researchers have discovered Neanderthal remains showing evidence of serious injuries and illnesses that had healed, indicating long-term care and medical knowledge. In one instance, researchers found evidence of a Neanderthal who had survived for several years with a withered arm and deformed skull, suggesting they were cared for by their community despite being unable to contribute to hunting or gathering activities. Their medical knowledge appears to have been surprisingly advanced. Analysis of dental plaque from Neanderthal teeth has revealed traces of medicinal plants, including chamomile and yarrow, known for their anti-inflammatory properties. More intriguingly, some samples contained traces of poplar bark, which contains salicylic acid, the active ingredient in aspirin. This suggests they had detailed knowledge of plant properties and were actively selecting specific plants for their medicinal benefits. Evidence of dentistry has also emerged, with signs of toothpick use and possible tooth cleaning tools. Some teeth show signs of deliberate grooving that might have been attempts to relieve pain or infection. This level of healthcare sophistication suggests not only technical knowledge, but also a deep sense of compassion and community responsibility. The discovery of a child's skeleton, showing signs of a serious brain deformity, who survived until adolescence provides powerful evidence of Neanderthal healthcare capabilities. This individual would have required constant care and attention from birth suggesting a level of social support and medical knowledge that rivals that of much later human societies. These healthcare practices weren't limited to physical injuries. Evidence suggests Neanderthals may have had knowledge of mental health care as well. The presence of certain minerals and crystals at Neanderthal sites, which had no practical use but may have had calming or focusing properties, suggests they might have recognised and attempted to treat psychological as well as physical ailments. Such discoveries force us to completely reimagine Neanderthal cognitive capabilities and social structures. Through a combination of optical dating of sediments and radiocarbon dating of bison bones, researchers determined that the Neanderthal occupation at Chagirskaya Cave occurred between 59,000 and 51,000 years ago. Additional radiocarbon dating of charcoal and Neanderthal bones confirmed these dates, with samples being older than 50,000 years before present. This timing coincides with a period when multiple distinct Neanderthal populations existed across Eurasia, suggesting a complex web of interconnected communities. Particularly fascinating is the evidence of gene flow between Neanderthals and Denisovans in the Altai Mountains. The analysis revealed that the Chagirskaya Neanderthals carried about 0.09% Denisovan ancestry, with the admixture event occurring approximately 30,000 years before these individuals lived, this suggests a complex history of interaction between different human species in this region. Though by the time the Chagirskaya family group lived there, such interactions had apparently ceased. The presence of identical mitochondrial DNA sequences between some individuals at Chagirskaya and Okladnikov caves, despite being separate sites, indicates these communities weren't completely isolated. They maintained connections over geographical distances, suggesting a larger social network that extended beyond immediate family groups. This level of social organisation challenges our understanding of prehistoric human mobility and community interaction. The technological evidence from the cave goes beyond just stone tools. The presence of specific hunting patterns, focused primarily on bison, suggests these weren't opportunistic hunters but skilled specialists who had intimate knowledge of animal behaviour and seasonal patterns. The eastern range of Neanderthal territory, reaching into the Altai Mountains, 
represents an incredible feat of adaptation. In Italy, researchers found evidence of Neanderthals using twisted fibres to create string at least 40,000 years ago, suggesting they understood complex manufacturing processes. The strings could have been used for clothing, bags, or even nets, indicating a material culture far more advanced than previously imagined. The question of Neanderthal language capabilities has long been debated, but the social structures revealed at Chagorskaya indirectly support the case for complex communication. The organisation of hunting parties, the transmission of tool-making knowledge, and the coordination of group movements would have required sophisticated communication systems. The anatomical evidence, including a hyoid bone similar to modern humans, suggests they were physically capable of complex speech. Their extinction roughly 40,000 years ago becomes even more puzzling in light of these revelations. Rather than a simple case of Homo sapiens competition, it appears that multiple factors, including population dynamics and perhaps interbreeding with Homo sapiens, contributed to their disappearance. The small size of their communities, while socially sophisticated, might have made them more vulnerable. Groundbreaking research has also revealed that Neanderthals may have possessed knowledge of marine resources, with evidence from coastal sites in Spain showing they collected and consumed shellfish. This maritime adaptation suggests a broader behavioural flexibility than previously recognised, challenging the notion that they were strictly terrestrial hunters. DNA analysis has revealed that modern humans of non-African descent carry between 1-4% to Neanderthal DNA, with different populations having slightly different combinations of Neanderthal genes. Some of these inherited genes influence our immune system, skin characteristics, and even aspects of our metabolism, suggesting that Neanderthal adaptations continue to benefit modern humans today. The story of the Chagirskaya family forces us to confront a deeper truth. Our history was not a linear march toward modern humans, but rather a complex web of interconnected populations, each with their own unique adaptations and innovations. The legacy of Neanderthals lives on not just in our DNA, but in the lessons their story teaches us about human adaptability, resilience, and the importance of social bonds. Their legacy challenges us to reconsider not just who they were, but who we are and what it truly means to be human.